Hey everybody, Nick again from Virtual Berlin Tours. Um, I just thought I'd come down um, to the heart of West Berlin, let you look behind me, you can see the Memorial Church with its early 1950s new tower, symbolizing here in the heart of West Berlin, sort of the 50s new modern world, post-World War II. Um, but um, basically every week in Berlin, there's some sort of significant anniversary. Berlin, as you know, has got this history that is uh, sometimes brilliant, uh, often tragic. Our story today revolves around uh, an anniversary of something that took place in 1919, um, in the middle of January, and that was murder, murder most foul, the murder of two politicians um, called Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg, uh, and that would be kind of the first warning shots of uh, a decade, or just over a decade of chaos, um, fear, unhappiness, violence, political expediency, um, a wave that Hitler would ride um, through the 1920s to become Chancellor in 1933. If we're going to be thinking about this murder, Berlin's history is important um, and generally we tell these stories um, as a warning for the future. Um, but um, horribly, terrifyingly, sometimes they remind us of the present. Does this sound familiar? Um, if you're a ruling executive government elite uh, and uh, you lose something really important like, you know, an election or conceivably uh, a war, if you concoct out of general ignorance and political expediency, cowardice, um, if you start to concoct a, a, a lie, a story that you hadn't really lost, uh, and you produce a group of people that you claim stabbed you in the back, um, a group of people that you then blame uh, for your loss, um, you can uh, um, disintegrate uh, a political system and produce the types of events um, um, that happened here uh, in the 1920s, a time of um, revolution. And that, um, the beginning of that revolution, is a story that we're going to be thinking about, the murders of Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg. But history teaches us that it's never a good idea. You concoct the lie, people are going to fail to believe um, the reality of the situation, and therefore um, you are going to have trouble uh, um, controlling that. And that's exactly what happens here um, in the revolutionary period immediately after World War I. So let's leave the heart of the West, because a few hundred metres from here is a Tiergarten Park. And in the Tiergarten Park on January the 15th, 1919, two bodies were dumped, Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg. But they were beaten uh, and conceivably already dead before they left a hotel, which actually lies just down the road behind me. It was called the Hotel Eden. Let's go down and start our story there. You know, behind me you can see the Elephant Gate to Berlin's famous zoo here in the West. Um, as with all stories, specifically with Germany, um, um, if you're thinking about some major event, you need to set up the background one of the things that makes Germany politically strange and leading um, to these events in 1919 uh, was that in the late 1800s, during the Bismarckian period, there was a conscious and a deliberate attempt to subvert what would, you could describe as the will of the people. Um, ultimately, the political party that gets the most votes um, holds um, a significant chunk of power. Um, here, that would be the Social Democratic Party. Um, but under Bismarck, you had this concentrated aristocrat uh, um, um, elite, ultimately, that held most of the reins of power um, above um, uh, parliamentary democracy. Um, and they would make an attempt to keep the will of the people from sweeping to power. And that leads into this great eruption after the defeat in 1918 and the surrender or the armistice um, at the end of World War I. But at the end of World War I, um, an armistice was called the Great Lie. We didn't really lose. We'd been stabbed in the back by the politicians within the Reichstag, um, the politicians that would then form Germany's first democracy in the 1920s. That would doom that democracy. And as I mentioned, the fear, the anger, the chaos, throw in huge economic, uh, social and political problems. You've got a recipe for disaster, and that disaster would be Adolf Hitler becoming Chancellor in 1933. Two of the members of the Social Democratic Party, perhaps two of the most vocal, one was a woman called Rosa Luxemburg. She originally came from a Polish town, town called Zamoc, um, <clears throat> which is in um, eastern Poland, um, a, a place of great learning um, with a uh, um, very well-known uh, Jewish community to which she belonged. But from Zamoc via Switzerland, where she studied, Rosa Luxemburg becomes a uh, very loud voice on the left of the uh, um, Social Democratic Party. She joined together towards the end, uh, or during World War I, together with um, a man from Leipzig, his name was Karl Liebknecht, um, and they were both vocally opposed in the build-up to World War I to that conflict. In fact, Karl Liebknecht was the only member of the, um, the Reichstag, the German parliament, that voted against World War I. They spoke against it during the war, things started to go wrong, starvation at home, 1916, 1917. 
Um, he was then jailed uh, um, for that. But as the armistice is called, there's a complete breakdown in the German military. The Navy go into mutiny, the armed forces start to go into mutiny. Um, and um, even though Rosa Luxemburg was against this, um, they'd formed um, the Spartacus League. That was uh, about to morph into two things. One would be the KPD, the German Communist Party, um, and the other would be um, a perhaps ill-advised uprising attempting to seize power uh, in Berlin armed militants on the streets. Now that was put down by the police chief. His name was Bloodhound Noschka. Put down with, uh, uh, with force. You got centre right and uh, um, uh, right wing military groups um, working alongside the Berlin police who were responsible to the Social Democratic Party. Um, but it's put down by force um, and uh, the immediate crisis is over. I mean for about six, seven months many uh, states um, within Germany would see uh, left-wing republics coming to power, uh, perhaps a legacy of two things. One is the fact they've been denied it for the decades before, even though they had large democratic uh, um, support, um, as I mentioned before, um, but also, of course, at the end of World War I, the royal family go, who had ultimate executive power, uh, and um, power within Germany needs to be uh, replaced. But um, on, on the second week in January of 1919, Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg were both arrested. They were arrested and held where this pretty horrible modern building is behind me. That's where the famous Hotel Eden complex used to be. Uh, and they were held there uh, under the control of a cavalry unit. The name of the man in charge was a guy called General Pabst. And um, in his testimony later, he would say, you know, we kind of had a chat. Um, but that chat involved uh, beatings um, of both Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. Luxemburg maybe was even dead before she left this hotel. The man in charge of those uh, um, interviews and beatings was uh, a guy called Runger. And though there was an investigation after the war and people were jailed, they were almost immediately uh, um, uh, amnestied um, after that. But those bodies, um, perhaps he's still alive, uh, she, uh, mortally wounded or even already dead, were bundled into a truck and they were taken down the road behind me to the park. Berliners have got long memories, um, even with the COVID restrictions. Let's go down and see how this event was commemorated most recently. This is the Landwehr uh, Canal. Um, it was originally designed, um, on the one hand, it was for uh, defense. Um, on the other, it drained the land. Berlin's very wet, very marshy area um, now. Uh, and back in the day, it's, uh, it was and still is used for uh, ship transport. I walked a couple hundred meters to get here, but if you look behind me, you can see these uh, brick buildings. Um, and just between the brick building and the modern building that you can see, uh, there's a cobble street. So I suspect those brick buildings are a pumping station connected to the zoo, which is just behind me. Um, I think they could have got here quick, more quickly with these dead and dying bodies of uh, Liebknecht and Luxembourg. Um, because if you look behind me, you can see the bridge. That is where Rosa Luxembourg's body was uh, dumped. We'll go down and look at the memorial. Uh, Karl Liebknecht still seemed to be able to walk. Um, he was taken to a um, a lake not uh, on the other side of that bridge we'll go there uh, shortly uh, it was much colder in 1919 than it is now the rose's body was then sealed below the ice on the canal and uh, wasn't found until may recently um, a pickled or preserved body remains were found under the charité hospital in former east berlin uh, there were rumors for a while that that might well have been the preserved remains of rosa luxembourg but that's now been discounted but her body was dumped by the bridge um, after the uh, beatings and murder in the Hotel Eden. Let's go down and have a look at how that's commemorated today. So in all the uh, over two decades I've lived in this town, it's always commemorated. You can see her name, Rosa Luxemburg, with the flowers. Let's see where they're from. There's the old huh, Turkish Communist Party. And here in the candles, you can see their faces. That's Rosa Luxemburg. That's Karl Liebknecht. Karl Liebknecht was taken over the bridge to a lake. Let's go and have a look at the memorial to that. Now, if Rosa Luxemburg's body was dumped <coughs> on that side of the canal where the um, memorial is, then it would have been kind of difficult. You couldn't have driven to where we are now. You have to be on the other side of the 
of the canal. So it's possible that they were on the other side of the canal where they threw the body in. It was just found on the memorial side. Carl Liebknecht was then taken to the shores of what we call the New Lake, uh, and he was shot there. Perhaps they did that so that they deflect from where Rose Luxemburg's body too, could be found. But a memorial was built. It also, of course, has uh, flowers on today still. And you can see it here by the lake. So this is where Luke's next body was found. Here is the column. These are from the late 60s. You see his name there. And they're looking out over the frozen lake. So kind of a warning from the past. You create a, a lie, blame a group you say was responsible for it, then claim that removing that group will fix all your problems. It's a kind of weird equivalency or comparable to some of the populist political posturing that we see today. Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg, the first warning shots that would lead to a, just over a decade of chaos. Hitler would exploit and lever himself to power.